back to Autoimmune and You. I'm one of your hosts, Rachel, and I'm your other host, Erica. (laughs) And today we are talking all about mindset because we are both really firm believers that mindset is the foundation of literally everything that you do. And it's really important to keep your mindset in check, but it's also very hard. And I think it's actually the perfect day uh, for us to be recording this episode because before our, we started recording, we were both kind of talking about how we weren't necessarily feeling it today. Um, and I think it's important for us to share things like that with you because we all go through it. We aren't perfect. We deal with stress and anxiety and depression and Mm -hmm. all the other things that come along with autoimmune disease, just like anyone else. And we're here to share our truths, like we always say. And that's why we're here is to just show you that it is possible to get through to the other side when even when you're feeling like the lowest of lows. Um, yeah. And so we'll kind of touch on a lot of different things regarding mindset and mindset during flare ups and when you're feeling that self-doubt and all the things. Um, but yeah, Erica and I we're both, I mean, I'm actually feeling a little bit better right now because yeah. Erica showed me a really cool song before we started this episode. Cause I was like, hold up. I need a dance break. Yeah, <laughs> And it helped for sure. It helped me too, because I think our, our both of us, because we're having a little bit of a flare. Um, and so we were talking about that and, you know, our energy felt low going into this. And I was like, ah, are you sure like we should record today? And then Rachel was just like, no, it's actually the perfect time to record. (laughs) And I was like, actually, you're right, because (laughs) we're not here to make anything sound easy or as if we know everything, like we're still, you know, going through this ourselves. And I think like no one has it completely figured out, Mm -hmm. but you can, you know, learn things along the way, obviously to help you and you can get stronger in your mindset, but it's so easy to, um, you know, spiral sometimes and it's, it's completely normal, but it's, it's having the mechanisms that, you know, adaptive coping, you know, when you are experiencing Yeah, exactly. It's so important. And like I said at the very beginning, like mindset is the foundation of everything. And I know that that seems so, I don't know, cliche or something, but if you think about it. Or it seems so basic, right? Everyone just like, oh, like it's just mindset, you know? And I think like people just assume like you just, oh, it's always positive thinking, like, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's, it's so much more than that. It's, it's really, it's like, a hundred percent like believing in your potential as a human and knowing that you can get past things. And it's not just like fake optimism, you know? Yes, exactly. I have always had an issue with the like quote good vibes only or positive yeah. vibes yep. only. And I'm like, I so true. We am so about positive vibes, good vibes. I will talk about that all day, but saying only is just yeah. not realistic. And also no. it's not healthy. Like no. sometimes you have those days and you have to sit with those feelings and you, and that's how you truly get through to the other side. Because if you sit with those feelings and whatever's happening around you and really take the time to process, you're actually going to come out on the other side, even more positive because you you are able to use that as like a growth, as an opportunity for growth or lesson, or, you know, just to like show yourself that you can do something. A hundred percent. I totally agree with you. So yeah, I think today's a good time to kind of talk about like what we experience, like for instance, you know, even these little, you know, they may not be huge flares, but just something as like so simple right now, my, Mm -hmm. my wrists are just, a little bit swollen and like, I feel like I don't have super full mobility right now on it. And so just even those little things can get in my head where I'm like, oh gosh, like, you know, is everything I'm doing actually helping me or like, am I going to get worse? And like, everyone's going to think I'm a fraud (laughs) and, (laughs) you know, and that's, you know, from my perspective of like being in this position as even a health coach and helping people, with their diet and lifestyle and, you know, advocating for the mental health side and all that stuff. You know, I, I tell my clients, like, I'm still experience those things. I still get fearful here and there, but honestly, it's become less and less 
over the years because I realize I am in control of a lot of, you know, how my body is acting because most of it is having to do with the thoughts, you know? And so I realized when I am in those moments of flair is that like, okay, are my thoughts amplifying this? Are they making it worse? Mm. Because sometimes, right, you start looking at your body and you're like, was that there? Uh Is that normal? (laughs) And then you're like, oh my God, does my joint look different? And then I'll be telling my husband, I'm like, oh, babe, come look over here. Like, does, does my toe look weird? And he's like, no, (laughs) he's like, it looks regular to me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can relate to that so much. Um, my wrists are flared up today and they were yesterday too. And yesterday I noticed that they not only were flared up, like they usually are usually, I mean, a flare up looks a little bit different for every single person. Right. So for me, my wrists tend to get like more stiff and just a little bit puffy, but yesterday I was noticing that they're a little bit painful and I, mm-hmm. when I get pain, that's when my mind really spirals. Cause I don't get like true pain from my yep, therapist. Same often. for me. So, same for me. Yeah. So like, and I, and then I was noticing that like down my forearm was more puffy and I'm like, Oh God, what? And then I'm like, Oh my gosh, my knees are flared up too. Oh my gosh. My ankles are puffy. And then it just like, you're constantly at that point in that mindset of like looking for things to be yep. worried about, which yep. is so not productive. It's like, mm-hmm. yes, you know what? Your body is flared up. So then for me personally, what I do is kind of backtrack like oh did I eat something that my body didn't like am I more stressed than usual am I getting enough sleep and am I drinking enough water did I forget to take my daily supplements which actually a couple of days ago I didn't take my nighttime ones and I didn't have celery juice so like there you go Mm -hmm. (laughs) like these are part of my daily routines that when I'm doing it very very consistently I very rarely have flare-ups like this yeah so it's just a matter of like taking a step back because of course I could let my mind go 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 and say oh my gosh I'm gonna get another huge flare up like the first time I was diagnosed and I couldn't walk for two weeks and I couldn't work for two months and like, or I could take a step back and go, Oh, it's just a couple of things that I forgot to do. And as long as I, you know, jump back in and keep doing them, I should be okay. And guess what? I'm definitely better today than I was yesterday. Yeah. And it's just a matter of like keeping yourself in check and like being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like we don't need to go there yet. (laughs) Yeah. And the, and the thoughts that we have when we're, you know, having anxiety or we're being fearful it's like our mind wants to create more situations to validate that Mm -hmm. feeling that we're having. And so then we start seeking out things to, yeah, to validate that and to perpetuate that feeling inside of us of fear and anxiety. And so that's where it's important to change the narrative and tell, you know, tell yourself something different. And it sounds very counterintuitive to tell yourself in a moment where you're not feeling good, like, I am happy, I'm healthy, I am mm-hmm. healing, right? Yes. Because it feels so oh, like, it happens. feels so counterintuitive where you're like, this doesn't feel right, because, you know, your body and your body has become addicted to these thoughts. And so when you're when your thoughts are telling your body a different story, it's kind of like, Hey, what's going on? Like, this doesn't feel right, but it's something that you really have to do. And I have to, sometimes I'm like, okay, I really need to go just sit down and just, you know, put on some meditative music and just relax and Mm -hmm. take and quiet my mind, you know, because your thoughts become this storm of just negativity and, Uh, You know, it's not helping. It's not, it's definitely not helping the situation, but you know what? Sometimes you, it's even easier said than done. Right. It's like, even we might even know all these uh, techniques and stuff to help us. But sometimes when you're Mm -hmm. so in it, you're like not even thinking about that. No, not at all. Right. Here's the thing though. Like our brains are literally hardwired to protect us. Right. And our brains, because they are hardwired to protect us, are constantly looking for proof that whatever we believe is true. And so if you're sitting there believing I'm sick, I'm sick, I feel like crap. Of course, your brain is automatically going to find every single um, yep. piece of evidence to support that. However, yep. if you do flip the narrative and create a new truth for yourself, 
Mm -hmm. Like Erica said, one of my favorite affirmations ever that I'm not kidding you. I write down every single day is I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm loved. I am healing every single day. And it's funny that you like said that because I literally, I write that down every day. And it's when you start doing things like that and reminding yourself that you are happy and you are healthy, no matter how you feel like you are healing every single day as long as you're doing what you know is your truth to healing and what yep. feels good to your body. You might have those days where you don't feel it like truly, but still reminding your mind that you are to some degree still healing. You are to some degree still happy. It's not a complete, it's not like you're like lying to yourself, for instance. Yeah. It's no, just, and we, Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. We we have the ability, you know, because we know with neuroplasticity that we have the ability to re- rewire and create mm-hmm. new neural uh, circuits at any exactly. age. So no matter, you know, how long you've been doing something, how long you've been thinking something, you're able to change that. And especially with those affirmations of telling yourself, you know, I am healing, I am loved. I am healthy, all those things. Um, they literally change our mind and mm-hmm. which change ourselves because we all think that we're this permanent, you know, I'm when people talk about themselves, they're like, I'm this, I'm that. And they say it as if they're always going to be that and there's mm-hmm. nothing they can do about it. Right. Like I hear people say all the time, like, oh, I'm stubborn. So they they use that as an excuse (laughs) to perpetuate stubbornness, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like, that's not a personality trait, you know? (laughs) So you can definitely change being stubborn by actually, you know, trying new things. And when you try new things, you're like, oh, hey, like, you know, I don't always have to be this way or, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, the the affirmations are super Uh, important. Affirmations are huge. And it's one of the first things that I recommend to my wellness clients when they first start with me is having a gratitude practice and creating at least one personal affirmation that they can tell themselves every day. It is, I think the one singular, most important mindset practice that you can incorporate is being writing down, not just thinking about it, but writing down gratitude and writing down affirmations. When I first started, I wrote down three things that I was grateful for and one personal affirmation every single day. It takes maybe one minute, two minutes Mm -hmm. tops. If you really can't think of anything, first things that come to mind, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Like I'm sitting at my desk right now. I could say I'm grateful for this plant on my desk. I'm grateful for my journal and I'm grateful Mm -hmm. to have Erica as a friend. Like you could literally think of anything that comes to your mind. But the practice of doing that every single day and also writing it down triggers different synapses in your brain. So your brain thinks about it in a different way. And that is how you really start um, digging deep and having that really be in the forefront of your mind. And that that dictates the way that you think rather than the way that you're used to. And also yeah. doing it in the morning is great because it's, that's how you start your day. Rather it sets than the tone. It sets the mm-hmm. tone for the day for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, when you're doing affirmations, you really want to make it in the present tense, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to say, I am healthy. And then you want to make it simple you know, I am healthy, super simple. And you want it to be very specific. And like Rachel said, writing that down is also the key component of that because put it somewhere, you know, on your desk or on the refrigerator, somewhere where you're going to see it on a regular basis and be able to remind yourself like, Hey, Mm -hmm. yeah. One of my favorite things right now, I've been writing with a dry erase marker on my mirror so that I see it every morning. And not only that, there's, you know, if you write something on your mirror, on your fridge, like it's great. But then, you know, after probably a week, you're going to forget about it. So change it up, like keep changing them or writing new or writing it in a new way. If you still need to hear whatever that one affirmation is, I change it up. Um, on my mirror in my bathroom, like about once a week. And not only that, but when I look at myself and I see it, I say it out loud. And that again is kind of putting that message out into the universe, whatever you believe in, it doesn't matter. Like you're Mm -hmm. just getting it out there. You're getting it out of your mind and you're setting a full intention to, you know, the universe and to yourself that you are 
whatever, whatever it is that you need to hear. And so that's what an affirmation is. If, if you're Mm -hmm. not familiar at all, an affirmation is basically a personal affirmation is basically you telling yourself something that you need to hear and something that you know that you need to believe. Yep. And so that's why we keep coming up with the um, example of like, I am happy, I am healthy, because that's something that we all want, right? And we all need to hear that because that's how we affirm it to ourselves. And that's how we start believing it's true. Like we were talking about, your brain is always going to search for answers or um, proof that something is true. So the more you say, I am happy, I am healthy, I am happy, I am healthy, I am mm-hmm. happy, and ha- I am healthy, <laughs> I'm going to mm-hmm. tongue twister myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the more you say it, the more your brain's going to be like, oh, wait, I am. You're right. Yeah. Even if you're not feeling your healthiest, you could be like, your brain's going to be like, oh yeah, you're right. You're getting enough sleep. You're drinking enough water mm-hmm. and like all these little things. And then you're going to start believing it. And that is where the magic happens, my yeah. friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's not just, you know, about your thoughts. It's about changing your behaviors, changing your routine, mm-hmm. changing your beliefs, changing your perception, <laughs> changing your attitude. So it is a very like multifaceted concept. It's not, you know, one simple thing in order to change, literally change the chemistry within your body, you have to start almost acting as if you have to start acting as the person that you wish to become. Yes. Right. And so, so and you also have to have um, the gratitude before you actually received whatever it is that you're (laughs) affirming. Right. So for me, I, the biggest part that I found that has been helpful to me when I am doing these affirmations is that not only are you telling yourself, like, I am healthy, you're literally feeling it. You're visualizing yes. yourself as a healthy person. You're asking yourself, what does that feel like if I'm healthy? What am I doing when I'm healthy? What does my life look like as a healthy person? And so you start giving yourself this visual of what it would look like for you to be a healthy person. And then you start experiencing, you know, these emotions and then these emotions signal to your body that it's already happened. So your body only knows what your mind tells you. Yep. And if, and then when your mind, you know, when you have a thought and that, and then you have the emotion behind it, it triggers the body to believe what you're thinking. Exactly. So you have to have the, gra- it, that also feels, um, counterintuitive to feel gratitude before you're, you know, you even feel good because when you're in really bad pain, it's hard to tell yourself Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm so grateful. (laughs) I'm healthy right now, you know, but honestly, it really does change the chemistry in your body when you do that. Yeah, truly. And you bring up such a huge practice that I have incorporated over the past probably year and a half or so every single night is visualization and exactly what you're saying, visualizing. And the thing is, it can sound when I first heard of visualization and manifestation practices, I was like, okay, that's like a little woo woo. But here's the thing. My background um, is as an occupational therapist, and I used to work in hospitals with a lot of stroke patients. Mm -hmm. And we would literally do practices like this with them where we would help them to visualize what it would be like and feel what it would be like if their other, like a lot of times they were paralyzed on one side of their body. We would help them with visualizing what it would be like if that body part could move. And we would literally put mirrors in front of them to where it would look like the other side of their body was moving, but really it was just their right arm if it was their left arm and so on. But I don't know if that really makes sense, but (laughs) basically we would help them to visualize, um, that the other side of their body was moving, even if it wasn't. And it's, it goes along with what Erica was saying about that gratitude practice before it's happening. Because when we would do these mirror practices and put this mirror in front of them, so it looked like that side of the body was moving to these patients, Uh they would be like, Oh my gosh, like this is crazy. And then from then, then we could start helping them with visualization without that mirror there. And they could really practice. And I'm not kidding you. There are so many studies on this and it works. It works for these patients. No, and that's it. This is the thing now, you know, it's not just some new age way of thinking. Like Mm -hmm. we actually have the science behind it. And 
I don't know about you. I think we've talked about this before, but I am such a huge fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yes. And oh so, my gosh. Oh my gosh. I've read every single one of his books. I'm actually uh, rereading his Evolve Your Brain book right now. Mm-hmm. And he basically says that we choose to remain in the same circumstance because we have become addicted to the emotional state that that produces the same chemicals that arouse the state of our being. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Oh my gosh, his books are amazing because I value science. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, my background is in psychology. I actually did. um, And I think it was a brain and behavior class that I took um, in my undergrad, but I did my research on psycho neuroimmunology at the time because I was really interested in the mind body connection and its relation to disease. And this was far be, you know, before I got diagnosed with autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's basically just the effect of the mind on health and, you know, people that are resistant to certain diseases because of, uh, their mental, uh, strength, I guess I wouldn't call it mental strength, but yeah, their mindset. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I've always been super fascinated with it. And, uh, and then since reading all his books, I'm just like literally the first thing that I recommend, like one of the first things that I give my clients when I work with them is Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, You Are the Placebo, or it might just be called Placebo, but basically he's talking about, you know, we have the capacity to basically our minds to trick, not trick our body, but, you know, change Mm -hmm. the chemical state of our body and bring back balance to our body because we're basically all living in a state of stress, you know, Mm -hmm. and a lot of us, especially with autoimmune diseases have some emotional trauma they've we've had or some physical trauma. And uh, yeah, that, that greatly has effect on our healing process. You know, if we haven't, you know, dug into the unconscious mind, you know, we're not, it's not as easy to make a lot of progress with our health. Yeah, I fully agree. I think, and you bring up a really good point with uh, the fact that you tell your clients to read uh, certain books because I do as well with my clients and there are definitely, that's a huge part of it is in order to change that, um, that unconscious mind, you mm-hmm. need to be consciously making shifts. Yep. Yep. And so the way that you can do that is by incorporating all different types of mindfulness practices throughout your day. And something that I highly recommend is seeking out some sort of personal development. And that looks different for everyone. So for yep. you, it might be listening to podcasts. It might be reading books. It might be listening to books. It might yeah. be just seeking out, I don't know, Ted a seen, talks. Seeing a therapist. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Seeing a therapist, like breaking into like uh, a lot of the emotional stuff that we sometimes we're not even aware that's it, that it's even there. You know, a lot of this stuff is like so deeply embedded in us that we may think on the surface, like, oh, I'm perfectly fine. Like, you know, I've managed that trauma, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm past that, like I've moved on. And a lot of the times that's really not the case because you don't really get past things naturally, (laughs) you know, like it's your, your mind is always going to remember the things that you went through, you know, but you have to you have to, you have to deal uncover with those them. things. Uh-huh, you have to exactly. uncover those things. And other things that might be helpful to someone that isn't necessarily open to going to a therapist right away, but also wants to work on some of the, I mean, we all have trauma is the thing. I think that there's yep. like, I'm not, I'm not lessening anyone who has had like severe, severe trauma, but we have all been through it, whether you think you have or not. Yeah. And we all have things that we need to heal um, below the surface and like subconsciously before you can really heal the rest of your body and the rest of your mind. And so that's why we suggest things like that. And if you're not quite ready for something like that, maybe just start by reading a book and then go from there. Like no one's asking you to deep dive and go to therapy and listen to all the podcasts and go yeah. find a Reiki healer and, yeah. you know, <laughs> read five books. Like, no, mm-hmm. start somewhere. Start simple somewhere. Things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Simple things for sure, because you don't want to overload yourself and then make your healing process a stressful process because that's counterproductive. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And I think um, 
that brings us to a really good point of we talk, I mean, we'll continue to talk about it a lot, but I think that we talked about it on our first episode about if you make all of these changes at once with lifestyle after you're first diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, it can get really daunting and really overwhelming very quickly. And so it's important to make small changes that you can actually sustain and that you can do long-term so that you can maintain your um, wellness. But it's the same thing with mindset work because it can absolutely get super overwhelming. If And then like Erica said, it can get stressful when really you're trying to lessen the stress. So find things that work for you. That being said, I highly recommend like I don't know, Erica, you could totally chime in too, but I would say if you are looking for like first steps on where the heck to start, I would recommend a daily journaling practice of writing down at least three things you're grateful for and one personal affirmation and find one book that you want to read that you feel like connects with you, something that you want to read, not something that you, that you're reading just because someone recommended it or that you're reading just because someone said it was good. Like find something that you truly connect with and feel like is the topic that you personally need to work on the most. A hundred percent because, you know, we're all coming from different backgrounds. We're all coming from different, you know, we all each have our own life story and where I may need to start off is may look far different from where someone else needs to start off, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, for me, I think the biggest thing that has kind of built my confidence in myself and everything I've been doing over the last five years for my health since I was diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, that uh, when I do, you know, my meditation and when I do uh, my affirmations and everything that it's actually making a chemical difference in my, in my body and I'm actually changing my health. And so Uh, for me, I tell people like, you have to, like, I can guide you and I can give you some resources, but you really have to dive into the research yourself because I think like, I think going in at it very blindly, it can have some, you know, positive, I, I guess it can have some positive impact obviously on you. If you start to just, you know, try to work on changing your thoughts, but if you really understand the actual science behind it, it makes you so much more like confident in yourself that, Hey, I, if I change my thoughts, I can change my physiology. Like I could bring back homeostasis to my body. I can lower inflammation in my body and I can create basically a new self, you know, a new self, so true. A, new, a new self that isn't connected to the disease. You know, you can reinvent yourself. You can reinvent your mindset when ever the hell you feel like it. I promise yep. you it is possible. I could, I could wake up tomorrow and be like, I'm going to start thinking in a different way and it could happen as long as I do the research. And as long as I am like doing everything that I can to support that in my own mind, you can do literally anything that you want. And And I think that's a really good point that Erica brought up about doing the research to like prove to yourself that it is true. It's just like anything like why do people like, you know, go to church because they want that proof that like something holy or something spiritual is happening. Um, why do people meditate? Well, because they want to connect with something, whatever that is, whether that's just like a quiet space within themselves or whether they just want a moment of relaxation and they keep doing it because they do notice the benefits and the differences. And I mean, meditation alone, I could just go on forever because I'm a huge advocate and it looks different for everyone, but that's the thing. You're not going, it's, it's one thing to dive into books and dive into journaling and stuff. But if you're not, um, taking into account and reminding yourself that these things really do have the power to change that, it's not going to change it as much. (laughs) No, a hundred percent. And so until I started really like diving into all this stuff and like really understanding it, I was like, oh my God, like humans have so much potential and our minds literally basically create the entire state of our yeah. of our life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like we draw things into our lives because of the thoughts that we think and the energy that we have. And, you know, and so it's just crazy. Like it seems so like simple and it, and then again, it sounds so like new age, but it's really not this way of thinking, you know, 
Buddhists and all that, that's been going on for a very, very long time. If, yeah. If anything, this information is just, you know, becoming more relevant. Yeah, it's resurfacing and it's becoming more relevant because we've become so detached from our bodies. We've become you know, our minds have become so crowded with so much thoughts. And I, and I read something the other day where it said, uh, research finds that I think 80% of our thoughts in one day are negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so if we're having 80% of our thoughts negative on a day to day basis, how is that not going to affect your health? And if you, and if you change those thoughts with positive ones, and start to have a better outlook on yourself and your potential as a human, like that can totally, totally change the state of your body. And I'm not just saying this, you know, because I've read it somewhere, like I've literally experienced it, Mm -hmm. experienced it. And so have you, Rachel. And that's why we're super passionate. And we're super passionate about this. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, we're just we're super passionate about it. And I know both of us, that's like the number one thing that we talk to clients about. This is like the number one thing that we talk together about. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. It is my mindset and the way that I act as a human being is I'm a completely different person than before I was diagnosed. Oh, yeah. And if I'm being completely honest, I owe a lot of it to being diagnosed because I went to such a low place when I was first diagnosed and I was in just like the depths. Like, and I know a lot of people listening probably know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Like, you just can't pull yourself out of it. You don't know what to do. Nothing seems right. You feel like your life is over. Nothing that you knew you're you're able to do when you're first, if you have a big flare up. Yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for this diagnosis for kind of forcing me into a different way of thinking and a different way of living because I had always been like, you know, positive thinking and blah, blah, blah. But I never truly knew what that meant until Mm -hmm. I started doing that personal development piece and the meditations and the journaling practice daily. And when we talk about these mindset practices, it's not like you do it for a week or you do like, oh, no. Healed. It's like, no, this is a, well, you don't just work out for a week and expect results. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because, and then you don't just stop working out expecting to have the same body. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's the same thing with your mind. Like the way we treat our physical body is the same way that we should, you know, treat our mind. And so, uh, yeah, the thing is when I was diagnosed, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself, uh, an optimistic person at, at, you know, any point of my life before my diagnosis, if anything, I, I consider myself of a more of a realist, but also I can (laughs) lean more on the pessimistic side. Um, but that's just mainly because of my upbringing and like, I had a very, you know, difficult upbringing. And so, uh, and didn't have a good family structure and like, I didn't have enough, like, you know, people believing in me and my potential and just a li- that's that's for a whole other episode <laughs> um but basically you know i didn't have that way of thinking you know before and it's really weird that this diagnosis has totally shifted my whole mindset my whole way of being and it's like i'm actually that's the biggest thing that i'm thankful for because i used to be a very stressed out person like Literally, I couldn't remember remember a time where like I didn't, you know, meet up with someone and go, oh, my God, I'm so stressed. Like I was literally in that fight or flight mode, you know, every single day I was in that survival mode. Mm -hmm. And that is such chronic stress is such an inflammatory state. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it totally it totally wreaks havoc on our cells, which damages our DNA and You know, when I think back to the lifestyle that I was living and the way I was thinking and drinking and doing drugs to suppress, you know, the emotional wounds that I had from growing up, you know, I just, I don't know. I look at that now. I'm like, wow, like, you know, all these things that I was doing was totally setting me up for some type of illness. You know, if it wasn't an autoimmune disease, it could have been cancer. It could have been something else. You know, you don't know. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we kind of touch on was 
what, what tangible things do, do we do that we have found that works when your mind does start getting back to that place that it used to go? Because we have both come so far with mindset and now we both, we each coach our own clients with mindset and Mm -hmm. with changing lifestyles, but you know, we still deal with that stuff too. And I want to make it clear to everyone that like, we're not, you know, cured or anything like that. We work on this every single No human is. No human. Exactly. And so we both mentioned at the beginning of this episode that we have both been dealing with flare-ups for the past like couple of days. And I definitely, I mentioned very briefly earlier that I started kind of going to that place of like, oh, this is swollen. Oh, this is swollen and looking for that proof. And then I took a step back and I was like, and I mentioned this earlier, I took a step back and I said, oh, there's like a couple of things in my daily wellness routine that I didn't necessarily do. And maybe that's why. And, you know, tomorrow's a new day. And like, let me just do what I can for my joints today to feel a little bit better. I wanted to talk quickly about just tangible tips that we can give listeners for how we get our minds out of that place. Because, um, like I mentioned before, when I feel pain, I immediately am like, oh my God, it's going to be as bad as my first flare up. Yeah. But it's not always easy to pull yourself out of that because our mind is looking for that proof. Mm -hmm. So Erica, if you want to share, if there's any specific, um, tangible tips that you have when, when your mind starts going to that place, is there anything that you could share? Well, I think for me personally, and this is, you know, after you know, five years, right, of managing or living with this condition is that I now realize, and this is actually something my husband is always the one to remind me of this, but I I, I have to remember like, okay, Erica, you've been here before. Mm-hmm. You've experienced this. It's not something totally foreign, (laughs) like you've had inflammation, you know that it can go in different joints. It doesn't make it, you know, it doesn't mean that you're getting worse or it doesn't mean that, you know, your whole healing process is, you know, worthless because you're experiencing something like this. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's even if I know that it was directly caused by something that I chose to eat or, you know, I chose to do or whatever the case that it is, I just have to have like forgiveness and understanding. And like, you have to have love for yourself in those moments and be like, okay, you know, why is my body doing this? And, and I ask myself, okay, like why, you know, why did this happen? Okay. And then I, I think about the things that I did. And if it's not something that I can pinpoint to exactly why I'm so swollen or why I got into a little flare, I just go, okay, it is what it is Mm -hmm. in this moment. And I know that if I, you know, continue with my routines, you know, keep my stress down, do what I got to do to get through this moment Mm -hmm. that, you know, an hour later, you know, an hour later from that moment where you're having anxiety, you're like, whoa, okay, I got through that. You know, it's like, you really have to become the own, your own coach of your own mind. (laughs) <laughs> and that's like, you know, it's maybe it's not a tangible thing. Maybe it's not, you know, but no, I think it she- is. I think it is. And it definitely it goes kind of with something that I wanted to say, which is reminding yourself there's like this quote, I feel like it like circulates the internet every so often saying like, you have been, you have gotten through 100% of your worst days ever. Yep. And it goes along with what you're saying. Like I've been here before I got through it. I know that I, you know, as long as I am continuing to be kind to my body and do the things that I know work, I will be okay. It's okay. And it might, this flare up might last a day. It might last a week. It might last two weeks, but I still know that I'm going to get through it. And also, and also the not beating yourself up, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the biggest things that I feel like that I struggle with. And that's something that I have to really work to be conscious about is not going there and like beating myself up. Like, dang it, Erica, like, why did you decide to eat those French fries? You know, why did you stay up later than usual? Like, why did you work out too hard? And it's like, all of that is absolutely nonsense because that means you're living, you're living in the past by ruminating on things that you did even hours ago, you know, like 
every moment, even right now, every moment is a new moment to, you know, change your thoughts, change your perspective. Absolutely. And so, so to like live in that, it just, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? And, and we tell ourselves like, oh, like, well, you know, why did I do this? Like, I shouldn't have done that. And it's like, I think about all, you know, over all these years, how much energy I wasted on just beating oh, myself God. up well, for totally crazy. normal things, for totally normal things. For yeah. what, Eric? For what, Erica? For just living? Like, that's what I, I was ma- going to say. Like, um, right? excuse me, you are living your life. And my question that I always ask myself is like, well, did you enjoy it? And yep, yep. 99% of the time, I'm like, fuck yeah, I did. Like, no, and I think okay, I said so that, what's the issue? Yeah. And I, I think I said this in the podcast where I, I keep bringing my husband, but I feel like he's been my coach <laughs> throughout all these years because he's definitely, he comes from like a really good family. Like he, he's got a really good like attitude about life. And like, he just, um, yeah, he's inspired me to be, you know, a little bit more like forgiving of myself, you know, because he's always like, if you're like, well, I used to be, I don't consider now I have a little bit of the tendencies of being a type A personality. And so the way I approach anything in my life, you know, the way I did with my job or, you know, school or whatever, like I was always super critical. And so I find that I can sometimes be super critical of myself and that is not good, you know, on this healing journey, you know, it's not good to be so hard on yourself. And so those are the things with self-compassion more than anything. Yep. And so those are the things that I tell people just like, don't beat yourself up, you know, don't live in regret for the choices that you made. You have to just be conscious of the next, you know, decision that you make. And that's all you can do. Look at it all as a learning opportunity. So like, let's say, um, I don't know, like a couple of days ago, I drank a lot of wine, like, and I don't yeah. drink very, I used to drink pretty often. Um, especially I feel like when quarantine hit everyone just like, you know, hit up the liquor store. Yeah. And yeah. I noticed that my flare ups were getting worse. So I was like, okay, yeah, I should probably like stop drinking a glass of wine every single night. And so I yeah. did. And now I drink maybe once a week, only socially. I'm never like at home having a glass of, well, not yeah. I'm very, very rarely at home having a glass of wine alone. And I feel so much better that way, but Mm -hmm. it's like a glass of wine, maybe two. The other night I had like too many. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was like, oh my God, I feel like complete crap. Like not Mm -hmm. only was I hungover, but all my entire body was puffy. My joints were super stiff. I was extra lethargic, like all these things. But then I'm like, same thing I just said. I looked back and I'm like, okay, well, if I could go back and Mm -hmm. not drink as much, would I? Well, maybe, but but it's also an irrelevant question, right? <laughs> yeah, but like, did I have fun? Absolutely, w- exactly. Do I regret it? No, like I did what I did, and it is what mm-hmm. it is, and like I can't change it. And you yeah. know what? I had a lot of fun, and I know, like we were saying, if I jump back into my routines, I'm going yep. to be okay. Yep, yep, because you know, you've you've found a, a system that works for you right and so when you experience these things and you do have a system down and this is also the big part about it is that in order to shift this mindset you have to start building those re- routines and changing mm-hmm. your behavior too right because if you don't have those things to fall Otherwise back on it spirals out of yeah, control yeah you need that to fall back on for sure Yeah, that makes all the difference for sure. And then the other tip that I wanted to bring up is that you can start reframing the way that you think about things. And so we talk a little bit in this episode about like, you know, positive thinking and how to do that. But the thing that I want to point out is like, you don't have to go from a completely negative thought to a completely positive thought, because like we Mm -hmm. were saying, you have to actually believe it for it to start to present itself to you and for you to start believing it. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I think that shifting from a negative, let's say a specific negative thought to a little bit more of a positive thought, and then slowly molding that into a a positive thought is really important. So for instance, sitting there saying, let's say your recurring negative thought is, um, I, I'm so sick. I'm sick all the time. I, Mm -hmm. I feel like shit all the time. Mm -hmm. And then we can slowly reframe that to, I feel good today. And then eventually you can shift that into, I am healing every day. And then you can shift that into, I am healthy. 
Yeah. And so it yep. doesn't have to be a completely negative to a completely positive. Cause if you do that, it's not really doing its job because if you're sitting there and you're writing down every day, I am healthy and you do not believe it whatsoever. Yeah. Your mind is it, like, yeah, right. Whatever. Well, it's meaningless. It really yeah. is meaningless unless you, unless you really truly, and this is okay. And this is the biggest thing I feel like when I talk to people that, you know, if they're having, you know, it's like a roadblock to their, their healing. And they're like, I'm doing all this stuff and I'm not like getting any farther or like maybe they're even feeling worse or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, um, yeah, I forgot what <laughs> I forgot. What is I was your mind say. in it? Is your mind? in? Yes. Is your mind? Process? Yeah, that's exactly. Is your mind even in it? Like, are you believing it? Are you just doing these things in your external world and you're not like internally believing it? Because if those things aren't aligned, then it's kind of, you know, in a sense, I wouldn't say pointless, but it's not going to make an impact on your okay, health. So like, think about, I want to try to give an example and I don't know, this makes sense in my mind, but I don't know how it's going to sound coming out of my mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. So think about like a marathon runner, right? If they're practicing every single day and they're just like running, right? They're just going on runs and they're just like, all right, I'm practicing for this marathon. Are they going to hit their goals and win that race versus if they're running every day and in their mind, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to make my time even better today. I'm going to make yeah. my time even better yeah. than yesterday. I'm going to make mm -hmm. my time even better than the day before that. And I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to win this race. You mm -hmm. best believe they are going to win that race oh, and yeah. win some with the second wave versus the yeah. first. The first, they might come yeah. in like, you know, third place runner up. <laughs> mm -hmm. A hundred percent. And so let me tell you this. So because I never got on medication when I was diagnosed, I, and I said it in the, you can go back to the first episode where I talk about uh, how I uh, immediately started seeking out natural uh, alternatives to medications for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I think because I like quickly, you know, I knew that, hey, if I'm not putting these medicines in my body to help inflammation, I need to freaking work on my mind, which was absolutely in a terrible state. So right off the bat, I was like, I need to do this freaking mental work. I need to like do self exploration. I need to be introspective. I need to like be aware of my thoughts. I need to do all those things. And so I immediately from the beginning, even though it's obviously I've like improved mentally over the years because that's what happens. You know, there's always things that you can improve upon. And clearly, like I said, it's still not there all the way, but I've definitely come a far way. But um, yeah, if I didn't, if I didn't immediately start off with that mindset, like, hey, this is all on me. And like, I'm determined to totally change my health around. Like I'm, I probably wouldn't be at all where I am today. You know, I probably would have eventually went on the medicine and I probably wouldn't have done any of the mental work, changed my diet, any of these things. No, I, that is absolutely, I can fully connect with that. I, um, I talked about this a little in the first episode too, but I was on medications when I was first diagnosed and my whole mindset was I had never been on medications in my life. I was like, I don't want to be on these, but I knew that I needed to be on them at first to keep my flare ups down and to get them down to a le level that was manageable. But then from there, same thing. Like I knew that I did not want to be on these medications forever. And I knew that eventually I'd yeah. want to wean off of them. And I knew that in order to do that, I needed to start that mental shift of like, I can do this because if you mm -hmm. don't believe you can wean off of medications, if you don't believe that you can start feeling better, if you don't believe that eating healthier can actually taste good, if you don't believe that your body can do the workouts that you want it to do, yep. you're not going to do them. Every single decision that you make, every single thing that you do starts with your mindset. Yeah. And so I want to kind of wrap this up in a little bow with something mm -hmm. that Erica and I talk about all the time on our social media together on our podcast, which is that if you want to start feeling better, you have to make that mental shift. That is the very first step. And that is why this is our second episode, because we think it's so important to really start getting that into your mind, because we will talk so much about mindset on this podcast, but yep. it is 
so important for you to understand that mindset is the foundation for anything else. And you Mm -hmm. have to make that decision for yourself to start feeling better. The first step to feeling better is to stop, to decide to stop feeling bad. Yep. A hundred percent. And I want to share something that I had posted in my Instagram. If you (laughs) scroll back way to the beginning, uh, I wrote it in a journal. The the day that I started working with a naturopathic doctor and the the day that I decided like, I want to do this holistically, like I'm like dedicated, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'll take whatever I need to take out of my diet. Like, you know, I'll do all the deep diving within myself, whatever I need to do to feel better. And I put... In my journal, I'm doing this for my health because I deserve a long, happy, and healthy life. I want to marry Garrett, which I did. I want to I want to be a healthy mom and wife. Well, I'm the wife, still mom to come. (laughs) (laughs) Not anytime soon, I don't think. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I want to inspire others to gain their health and get their health back, which I've done, become a health coach. I want to challenge myself, which I've done. I want to have a positive mindset. I want to reduce stress and worry. I want to climb. I want to explore and I want to live pain free. And then underneath it's, I put, I'm going to do it with a happy face. <laughs> oh God. I love yep. that so much. Snaps for Erica. <laughs> yeah. And I, and it's crazy when I You're look back, I want to go back to my journals now. I love looking back. Yeah. I look back on that and I'm like, oh my gosh, I literally fulfilled all of those things that I wrote down. Yeah. A hundred percent. So write these things down, people. Just trust us. These things really, really, really really, do work. I don't have a um an an example of my goals like that, but I do have an example of manifesting things into your life because I I have a million notes in my phone because I have all these ideas constantly circulating and I just like jot them down and then sometimes they come to fruition, sometimes they don't. Anyway, I was scrolling back looking for something um a couple weeks ago and I found this thing. I call it a manifestation list. And so anytime that there's like material things that I really want, but like, I don't ever buy myself things unless I like really, really, really want it or Mm -hmm. need it. Yeah. And, um, so I, I started doing this like years ago where I would write down a manifestation list of like, just basically, you know, like extra things that we just want. Yeah. And it was from a year and a half ago. And (laughs) I opened it up and I have every single one of those things now. Yep. And they aren't, they aren't like, you know, cheap things and they aren't. And so a couple of them weren't material. A couple of them Mm. were like things in my life and I have every single one of them. Yep. And it is proof that the more that you believe that it's true, that you will, you can do it. You will do it. And you need to believe it in the present tense. We mentioned that briefly, but I don't Mm -hmm. think we put enough emphasis on that. Not I will. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. Like I am. I am. I am. I am healing. I am healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think we, I think we uh, touched on a lot of good concepts and obviously there is so much more to dive into this. So much more like personal experiences that we can share Mm -hmm. with you guys. Uh, But we're, we're trying to, you know, give you, give you just a little bit of what, you know, our podcast is all going to be about. And we're going to step off our soapbox now. <laughs> yeah. I think have another dance party after this, Erica. Oh yeah. I need to stretch it out for sure. <laughs> I hope right, you guys have guys a wonderful so day. Joining us. We are so happy that you are here. Um, join us next time. We don't know we'll what see. our episode is going to be about yet, but you'll yeah. find out. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to remind you guys that we are not medical professionals, nor do we give medical advice. So please do not stop taking any medications without consulting your doctor. However, if you'd like to learn more about holistic ways to manage your autoimmune symptoms, we each offer private coaching services and would love to help you. Stay tuned for our next episode. In the meantime, let's connect on Instagram. We are at autoimmune and you, and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to follow each of our personal accounts, we would love that too. You can find our Instagram handles and our websites in the show notes. We'll chat next time. And always remember, you are more powerful than you think.